There we go. Okay. All right. So if I can have your attention up here, please. Um, we are getting ready to start, and this is chapter seven and eight pushed together. Again, not necessarily following the textbook, um, but when you start doing your bell questions, there'll be some in both chapters, just so that you know. And the reason being is that your textbook divides chapter seven into middle ages and chapter eight into high middle ages, and I just push it all together into one. So what we're looking at with high middle and high ages is what used to be referred to as the dark ages. Um, historians typically call, like if you remember those of you that have a really good memory, we talked about this during our look at Greece and that dark ages typically apply to time periods when a lot of catastrophes, a lot of um, stresses on the population were happening and it was just enough to stay alive and feed your family and have a roof over your head rather than writing plays and musicals and all of those things. We since have kind of changed that time period into the Middle Ages because there were lots of great things happening, even though people were dying of the plague and all of those other uh, horrible things. So we've changed it into uh, the Middle Ages. And the reason it's the Middle Ages, it's in between the rise and the fall of Rome and the rise of Europe. And so it's this kind of time period in between when a lot of um, uh, difficult things were happening to the population. And I already mentioned it once, and it is the plague. That's the thing that's going to happen that's going to create such a difficulty and hardship for people. Now, if you live through the plague, you were golden, especially if you live through the plague and you had a skill or a trade. So if you were a blacksmith, and before the plague hit, you were, were competing with a lot of different blacksmiths and each village only allowed a certain amount. They were guilds or unions, just like unions today. If you want to join a union as a journeyman or as an apprentice, um, each union only accepts so many. You have to take a test. From that test, they say, we only are going to take 10 electricians this year. And they do that because if there's a lot of electricians, what happens to their wages? They go down. So they regulate how many. So if you were part of the blacksmith guild, you had all these other competitions, um, uh, regulations set on you. The plague comes, it wipes out three fourths of your village. You're the only blacksmith left. What's going to happen to your wages? They're going to go sky high. So for those people, if you live through the plague, it's pretty awesome. The rest of the people, three fourths of you are going to die. We do play that game. We are going to play my play game. What I'm going to have to make sure that all of you do is keep your masks on while we play it. So can we all agree to do that so that we have fun killing each other? Okay. Oh. We'll kill each other, not for real. Ooh, that's a bad joke in COVID times. Forget I said that. We're going to kill each other with cards. You're going to get cards and then you're going to die. Um, so that will be one of the things. And the reason I really want to play this game is it is a really good visual because it's hard to think about. Again, gosh, I've never taught this plague thing when we actually are having a plague. I'm going to be very careful with my word choices. But I think it's really hard to think about three-fourths of a village disappearing. And so we're going to get that visual when we play our plague game. So. The first thing we have to start with is moving from Rome into Europe. Now, again, we talked about the fall of Rome lasting a really long time. These things, again, are going to take a period of time. So our first thing that's going to happen in these Middle Ages is we're going to move from a Roman-centered world to a European-centered world. And that's going to happen with a lot of things. And again, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about the church and religion. And we're gonna call it just the church because there's only one and that's the Catholic church. But we don't even have that name now. We don't even need that name because it's just the church. So those Germanic people are gonna start moving into those Roman territories. That's the Vandals, the Visigoths. Um, and by 500, Western, the Western Roman Empire are going to be controlled by German kings. There is not a country called Germany. There's just lots of these Germanic kings. German kings are pretty smart. 
They have always had to protect their territory. And the first thing they do is they say, no Roman people can hold any power. All of the power in Rome now is going to go to these Germanic kings. And there's a lot of them spread out all over the place. So the next thing that's going to happen, and again, these are words that probably many of you have heard, Anglo-Saxons. Uh, especially if you watch any kind of Vikings movies or Viking things, an Anglo-Saxon. If you are in this class and you don't have any um, um, DNA that is Hispanic, African, or Asian, you are an Anglo-Saxon. The German Angles and the Saxons, which are those blonde hair, blue-eyed people, the Germanic people, that would be my red-headed people. And I'm just going to say, for the sake of this, as we discuss, my mom's a redhead, my two sisters are a redhead, everybody in my family. If you've ever been to North Carolina, that's the home of the red-headed people. Like, everybody's a redhead. I stand out as the weird one at family reunions because I have dark hair. Um, but that's Germanic. Those people will combine together in this country that will become known as Great Britain and become Anglo-Saxons, which are the foundation of most everybody here in the United States if you are of European descent. And the longest lasting German kingdom was the Franks. Now, remember I said that those Germanic tribes are all over the place. Anybody think of a country that might become something from the Franks that starts with an F and say it loud, France. This is going to become France. So when we say those Germanic kingdoms, don't think of that country, Germany. All of Europe at this point is those Germanic kingdoms. And the largest, most powerful one will be the Franks. And that Frankish kingdom is going to be established by this guy named Clovis. I guess I can turn that light off. The reason we mentioned Clovis, and this is something hopefully you and I, I have expressed to you when you've asked these questions in your brain, because there are lots and lots and lots of those Germanic kingdoms controlled by lots and lots and lots of kings. Why do I need to know anything about Clovis? Why that particular king? And you need to know that particular king because he converts to Christianity. Those Germanic kingdoms are pagans, right? They believe in uh, the um, pagan gods. They eat people. You know those Grimm's fairy tales, Hansel and Gretel? What does the witch, why does she put them in the cage to fatten them up? Because she's going to do what? Eat them. All of those fairy tales have some semblance of a purpose in describing things the way they were. Germanic kingdoms, um, if you disappeared into the Black Forest, you could get eaten. Anybody ever read the real tale of Cinderella and what the stepsisters try to do to their feet to fit it in? They chop them off. Those are the Grimm's fairy tales that you are not read. If you've never read the real Grimm's Brothers fairy tales and you like those kind of things, yeah. But we need to know Clovis because Clovis converts to Christianity. And so Christianity moves from the Roman and the Middle Eastern territory of which it begins into Europe. So that's why his name is so important. And he, like our other guys, converts because of his wife and the nagging of his wife. Please, I want to see you in the afterlife. I want to see you in heaven. Clovis has a lot of wives. All of these people are going to have a lot of wives. We don't get to the idea of marriage being one person for quite some time. And the reason being is it's the role of the king to have a lot of sons so that those sons take over. And to have a lot of sons, sometimes one wife doesn't cut it. Clovis is going to win support from the Roman Catholic Church. I, in my notes, refer to it as a Roman Catholic Church so that you know what it is. But again, it would have just been the church, just one church. So now we have Christianity moving from those um, uh, Roman territories and those 
places in and around the Middle East up into Europe proper. So what does the Germanic society look like? It is, again, because they're tribal, family, and extended family. And as a tribal group of people, they act tribal. You kill one of ours, we kill two of yours. You take one of our cows, we take two of your cows. It is very much, can you guys, I know you want to flip over, but go back and stay on this for just a few minutes so we make sure, because this is really important. So what happens to your tribes as you continue this revenge mentality? Does your tribe grow big and strong or does your tribe become diminished and slow? Choice B, right? So somewhere along the line, these groups of people had to say, we got to come up with a better way to settle our disputes than just killing each other because that's not working. We have to figure out something. These people don't have court systems, and that's what I mean by saying they're tribal. They're really very much like our Paleolithic man. They're moving around. They don't have courts. They don't have centers of, of uh, cities. They just move around. And so they don't have a legal way to settle something. So they got to think of something else. And again, this something else is very, for those of you that like um, ana uh, analogies, it's very much still like the mob right? You kill one of ours, we kill two of yours. You take this, we take that. So what they do is they establish some other form of payment and that payment becomes money. And it's called vergeld. Geld means money. Money for man to stop bloodshed. So this is one of these really important moments in history that don't sound like a really important moment, but it is a crucial and what we call historians watershed moment because we have just put a monetary value on human beings on human beings we've decided we're going to place an amount of money and it's done so that we stop killing people but what it is is it has made some people valued more than others and so let's start with gender who do you think is valued more as far as payment is concerned Males or females? Obviously males. So that already begins to put that stratish, uh, uh, stratification between those two groups. Let's think age. Children versus a middle-aged man. Who's going to be worth more? Middle-aged man. How about middle-aged man versus old man? Old man down here. So in doing that, in trying to stop something that's horrible, we create something that will be even more long lasting and horrible, that we've placed money on human lives. Now courts do that all the time. If you go to court um, and you have been injured or uh, someone has uh, uh, experienced a death that can be sent to, or caused by someone else, courts decide that all the time. And it is based on things like what your ability to earn a living or do you have but when we think about it historically speaking what has happened is we have placed value of money on people's lives and it will add to uh, that stratification between and then we'll do our last one a rich person dies and a poor person dies are they going to be valued the same they're not and so this and stopping something horrible creates uh, this other part that tends to be. So I wanted you to hold on that so you could look at that. Um, next, church. And this is when my Catholic friends, you know the answers to everything already because this makes sense to you. You know exactly. My Catholic friends, you should also know that your church started like this in 500, com are we out of order? Just flip so you find it. It's there somewhere, I'm sorry people. Roll the church. No, nowhere, nowhere. That's why that, remember I said, wow, that packet seems really small. Look at your page numbers. I bet they're all even, aren't they? Because I didn't do two-sided. Are your page numbers all even or all odd? Yeah, 
That's why. Do you remember when I passed those out? When I started passing, I'm like, wow, that's really light. It's because you only have one side. Okay, so that's good. We'll stop there for notes. We'll talk about. It. But let me just say to my Catholic friends, your church is 500 years old. In 500, that's the way it was. For those of you that aren't Catholic in the 21st century, guess what? It's the exact same. That's why I say it's great to be Catholic because you already know these answers. You already know what an archdiocese is. You already know what the, ses- the setup is. You already know what a bishop is, the diocese, bishop of Rome, all that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about our next um I hate saying project because you guys get all, but this is a fun project. So hold on two seconds. Don't get anything out. Just sit tight. I like to get a table. Hold on. look at when we talk about Middle Ages is my favorite parts, fighting. When we look at the Middle Ages, as much that we talked about those Germanic tribes moving around, we're also going to develop and begin countries and and, um, different regions. And one of the ways that that is settled is through battle. At this time period, countries don't have what's called a standing army. Every noble has their own army. So I'm the noble in this room. You guys are my army. You go about your business on a day-to-day basis, growing food, um, blacksmith. And at times of peril or times of war, I call you up. You owe your allegiance to me. Some of you, and we'll do this too because we can do this game um, with our masks on. Some of you will be noble people some of you will be knights and then some of you will just be the peasant people that fight but the point is you are my army you're not the army of france you're the army and i like to name myself lord fufu face that's who you fight for and in fighting for lord fufu face i supply you with equipment so you've got your chain mail that you put on and chain mail for those of you that have heard that word or you don't really know what it means it really is just links of chain that go over you that protect you from a sword kind of like an old-fashioned bulletproof vest that tries to keep the sword from going inside of you and it's really made of links of chain on top of that you're going to put your um, armor and then the most important thing you're going to put on your head to protect your face and then you're going to cover and all of you are going to look the same. Think about those knights of armor that you've seen. They all look the same. What distinguishes you from the other people that are fighting is your shield. And if you were fighting for me, I would have some sort of heraldry that would know instantly when you showed that shield that you belong to Lord Fufu Face. And let's make it a big, poofy, pink pom-pom with glitter shooting out of it. That's me. So when we're fighting on the battlefield against Mr. Autry's, they would have their heraldry, you would have yours, and your shield would be me. And so you wouldn't fight someone that had the pink pom-pom. You would be fighting the bald man down at the end, right? So those shields really mean something. And I have a couple up. Those of you that have been looking at them, that's what we're getting ready to do. Now, you don't have to make one like that. That's very much. um, That one, I think, is made out of a barrel, and it's pretty awesome. Um, But what you need to think about and what we'll be looking at, and this, again, this is the medieval shield assignment. Everybody just sit with me because I'm going to walk through it. Um, and uh, show you what we're looking at. So there's two things when you open this assignment. One is the assignment that we're going to look at, and then one is a website that we'll look at um, in helping you make these shields. So, oh, I don't want to save it. I want to open it. So, oh, i got to put my glasses on to read this. 
Medieval Shields. Look through the website provided below, which this is in a different place. Why is this one? This is not the one I want. There are very specific rules for designing a coat of arms. Make sure you are following the proper steps so that you create a historically accurate shield. So that's the first thing. It's historically accurate. You're going to make it about you, but it has to be historically accurate. So all my people that have music or sports as something that's important to you, you can't put a basketball. You can't put, you guys can't see anything, can you? Hang on a second. Let me change, change this. Let me try this. There we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So my people that are artistic, music, sports, you can't put a basketball. You can't put a volleyball. You can't put um, an... Um, um, whatever you play music out of these days, your phone. What you can do and what we will do is we'll look through this list and find those pictures that mean the same thing, that mean artistic, that mean athletic, that mean brave, okay? So your shield should reflect your personality, your future goals, your family connections, your strength, anything else that makes you you. This is about you. Your shield can be made with anything that can be brought to school, anything at all. Um, poster board, paper, paper mache, anything. Your shield will be graded on neatness, historical accuracy, effort, and creativity. Note, it is not graded on artistic ability. You don't have to draw, and I will show you lots of things that you have choices of. Effort and creativity is, holy cow, my shield's due today, let me finish it in act. Trust me, I know. It is why those pictures are on the back of the board back there because I'm pretty sure you can tell me the people that spent a little bit of time versus the people that said, oh, crap, my project's due today. That's my AP kids, people. I'm not very happy with many of them. You can tell. Like the votes for women, Susan B. Anthony, ooh, that's pretty cool. Even though the Fort Sam Houston guy, the little soldier guy with the flag, even though that looks like somebody drew it in third grade, he didn't do that during act. And even the tree with the bricks, that's pretty good. Look at the SS Knox. So if you were going to do that, look at the coloring. Like, ooh, that's some sporadic, wow, i got to finish this coloring. We know those things. So that's what I mean. Make sure they spend some time. Artistic ability will not be a factor. The shield is 40 points. The second part is the writing assignment. So let's start with this, 60 points. If you just do the shield, can you pass this assignment? It's on purpose. I don't even make it 50-50, because you gotta write. It's not hard to write. This is an easy essay to write because all you're going to do is explain your choices, okay? So explain why you chose the symbols, why you chose the colors, the animals, the quotes. It must be in paragraph format. So when I say paragraph format, that means you don't just say, I picked yellow because yellow means royalty. I picked an otter because otter means greatness and speed. Then I picked, okay? Now, you don't have to tell me a lot of stuff about yourself. You can say, lady, you don't get to know anything about me. I am not telling you anything. And you can very simply say, I chose the um, canon because canon means a powerful mindset and I am always strong in my beliefs, period. Or you can say, I chose a canon because I'm very strong and powerful in my beliefs because when I was in the second grade, my grandfather passed away and it was very meaningful to me and I promised that I would live my life to honor my grandfather's memory. I'm crying just saying all that and it's not even true. You could tell me that if you want to. You can, you can cleanse your soul and have a Dr. Phil essay. I will love to read it and sit and cry and be so thrilled with you. Or you can just say, powerful memory, or I'm going to be strong in my mindset because I stand strong in my beliefs and I don't let people walk over me, period. 
That's up to you. But it does need to tell me what part of that symbol is something that you think reflects you. Um, focused on explaining symbols, why you chose them. The writing assignment is the biggest part of this assignment, and it's worth 60 points. You can do, uh, and I have a turn-in spot for this on Canvas. For those of you that like to type, please double space if you type. If you are not a typer and you'd rather handwrite it, you certainly may handwrite it. Please double space that as well when you um, uh, write that by hand. So the website that this takes you to, this link, um, takes you to, and again, you can't see it because I don't have it there. Hold on, let me see if I can slide that simple. There we go. This is our website. And what you want to look at is, okay, get away, colors. So the colors tell you what they are. Gold, generosity, peace, and sincerity. Now, if you look at red, red means warrior or martyr, semicolon, military strength. Lots of these are going to have more than one thing. If you are, uh, um, feel like, ooh, I don't know that I have military strength, but I'm a warrior, you can use that part. You don't have to use the whole thing. Some of them have like five or six things. So you choose whichever one um, that is you. Uh, like black. Black means uh, being constant or grief. And that const constancy means that you, you don't, you're not wishy-washy, right? You don't, you're not friends one day and friends not doesn't have to mean grief, right? It doesn't have to be that something bad. Royal, majestic, so those are the colors. Now, a shield is divided up into quadrants. Um, one, two, three, four, however many you want, and you can use however many of those colors um, that uh, you like. Then there's fur. I don't ever really have anybody use the fur because it's hard to do on a shield. These same with these lines. You don't have to use these lines to divide things. That's up to you. And then we get to all the symbols. And there are pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of these symbols. Some of them I have no idea what they are or have I ever seen. Um, so an anchor. I don't know if there's any on these. But lots of people use the anchor. One, it's easy to draw. And two back part. Those of you that have a very strong developed faith, religious steadfastness. That means I stand strong in my religious beliefs. So a lot of people use that one. Um, and that's what you would explain. And you can explain that again. I'm a very religious person. I try to live life uh, according to scripture, period. Or big old long story you could tell me about why. Uh, and again, these um, Symbols, there are so many of them. Antlers, I get a lot of antlers, means strength and fortitude. Strength meaning I'm strong and whatever you're strong in. That will be some of the things that you can do. An industrious. Now, two things are going to happen. Some of you are going to tell me, oh, I already have a coat of arms of my family. And many of you probably do. The problem with that is you're going to have to take those symbols that are on your family coat of arms and apply them to you. And sometimes that's not going to work. So it's better just to really say, I, yeah, I have a family, but I need to do this one of myself. Um, and, and I'm not kidding how many there are. There are so many. So, so many. And you cannot use that one because you like the Chicago Bulls. Please don't do that. I had that one a few years ago. Like, no, that's not what that means. Some of you, and this is also another really good assignment because some of those words, you don't know what they mean. And it's a really good way to look up nice new vocabulary to use. So I like to show you examples um, of different ones. I like to show this one first because guess what this is on the back of? A pizza box. I don't know if any of you know Joe Gillum, but his family ate a lot of pizza. It's a pizza box. This is... Joe graduated in 2012. So this is from 2009. That's how long ago it is. Um, and very simple. Now, this right here, you don't have to choose a logo, but most um, knights had some kind of phrase very um, from um, 
what they were, but they have to either be written in French or in Latin. Google Translator is your friend, Mrs. Flath. I don't know. I don't think many of you have Mrs. Flath. If you have Mrs. Flath, Latin teacher, she can get it to you. If any of you have any of you have Mrs. Murdoch for ACT, French teacher, she'll be glad to translate. But it does have to be in French or in Latin because that was the only words. So there's Joe's. The only thing for Joe, and it doesn't make any sense now, but Joe loved Batman. And I had to ding him for the, putting the Batman on there just because he loves Batman. But he said he could not do it. It didn't cost him 30 points. So there's that. Um, this is um, Kate Hannon's. And this is done on just regular old poster board. And if you look at hers, she drew all these. But again... The drawing was fairly um, stencily like, right? Not, I, I don't know that I could do the B. I could for sure do this. I could for sure do this. I'm not sure about the B. And then there's her Latin phrase. And then she actually put her name, which you can or cannot do. That's entirely up to you, however you want to, to do that. So there's that one. This one I show you because as I pull this down, this person used your friend, the computer, and these are all just cutouts, but look how nice they are, right? They are, this is my effort that I'm talking about. The effort of that, very simple again, but does exactly what the assignment's asking. And again, that's just on poster board. Now we're getting a little more artistic, people that like and that can do these things. This is on the back of, and I always do this in January. So all of you that got like new stuff that came in cardboard boxes, make sure if you're not taking it to the recycle bin, you dig that back out. This person, a little more fancy, right? I could never do this. Like never. My artist, this is the part that you can go to. I will tell you, and this is why I like these assignments because you guys that like to do this, you get to do this and have fun with it because let me just say this. Those of us that are not art, this is no way fun. This is like stress causing anxiety. My people that like art, this makes them excited. So for those of us that don't like art, this is exciting to people to do that. That's why I get things like this and things like that. Right? So that's that. And this one gets a little bit fancier again but very simple. Okay. Then I get ones like up there and you can see that up, that one up there is out of wood. I'm sure her dad did that for her. She's got jewels on there. Um, I used to have some, but they, they, st because of old age, they started to fall apart. Um, those of you that do any kind of crafting that you have, um, um, cutouts of things. You can use all that stuff from Hobby Lobby. You can put real feathers. The peacock feather shows up a lot because the peacock feather, I think, means um, uh, beauty and knowledge. It doesn't mean like you're beautiful, but it means you acknowledge that knowledge is beautiful. So peacock feather gets used a lot. I have people put a real peacock feather on there. Um, and then I have people that do that back there. That, I don't know how old that one is. That's off the side of a barrel. Like, it's pretty awesome. So it's up to you however much effort that you put into that. Um, I think I have the due date. I got to check my due date because I um, have it on the worksheet as one thing and then on Canvas as another. So it's something to work on. Um, I'd be glad to help you with anything. It should be, I always say fun, but then those of you are looking at me like it isn't to stress you out, but it is to make you think about what these things mean. Okay. Questions, anybody? So because we didn't get to the notes part of the church part, um, there is an assignment. <laughs> so um, I got to redo the notes. That probably means tomorrow, 
because we didn't get to the notes about the church. I don't have anything for you to do tomorrow. So work on this tomorrow and look through there. Does anybody have questions about this? Uh, I And I never show this because I, I return them. You can do it on a piece of paper. You can do it on a piece of paper. So please don't think that you have to expend any money. If you need poster paper, if you need any kind of supplies, I have tons of supplies. I have tons of stickers. I have yarn. I have all kinds of things. Um, how about if you guys, oh, well, you'll need to keep it. Rip off the front page of your notes that you took and then pass those notes forward to me so I can recycle them. Did I not say when I was having you down? Samuel, you're 